In this talk, I'm going to introduce our work Ada RNN Adaptive Learning in the Forecasting of Time Series. This is a work jointly done with students from Nanjing University and colleagues from NUS, NTU, and Zhejiang University in China. You can check our paper code in these links, and if you have any questions, you can contact me through this email address. I'm going to start with the background. We know that time series is an important data type with wide applications such as stock prediction, health status control, weather forecasting, sales management, and energy consumption. For example, this is a figure shows that the daily closing price of Nasdaq from 1985 to 2014. We can see that this is a time series and it is really, really challenging to predict its values. So, accurate prediction of time series remains a challenging and unsolved problem. We know that there are some existing time series models, such as Markovian, uh, Markov chains following the Markovian assumption, RNN models, and transformers. For example, firstly, the Markovian assumption is each observation is only dependent on the previous one. Following that assumption, HMM, dynamic Bayesian network, common filters, and other statistical models like RIMA and ARIMA models are built for statistical analysis of time series. Secondly, the RNA models can find highly nonlinear and complex relationships in long time periods. For example, RNA, LSTM, and GRU are all widely adopted in, in, in existing time series works. And recently, it is shown that top LSTM shows great performance by combining the power of convolution and LSTM in a single network. Thirdly, the recently proposed transformer networks shows unparalleled excellent performance for time series modeling. For example, it can perform unparalleled modeling and capture long-range dependencies. For example, a transformer network is not originally built for time series forecasting, but it can be easily modified to mod to predict the time series values. In this work, we are starting with our motivation. We know that the time series in our real world mostly are non-stationary. It means that the statistical properties of them are changing over time. For example, if you are given a raw data just like this, you are going to predict the unseen test data with increasing time. So we can see that this blue line is the time series. So what property does it have? We can see that if we are going to split them in some segments, for example, in these dotted lines, we can see that in this range and in this range, the distribution of the time series stays the same, but in any other two segments, for example, this and this one, they are not the same distributions. So maybe we can we can dig deeper into this property and try to analyze the properties behind the time series in this way. For example, if you can see that A, B, C are with different distributions, and of course the unseen test data also has a different distribution, we can see in this figure, we can see that P, A, P, B, and P, C are not the same, and also P tests are not the same too. So we call this temporal covariate shift just like this one. It means that the statistical properties of the time series are changing over time, resulting in their probability distribution does not be the same. How to build a temporarily invariant model for this problem? And now we are giving our time series forecasting definition. We are going to formulate it into a rather formal definition, like it's a tall step prediction. The tall, when tall equals one, it is the one step prediction. But when tau is greater than 1, it will be multi-step prediction, which is a rather general definition. Definition is rather general. You can say that you are basically giving x and y, which x is the input value and y is the output value. And our work is to predict the next values of y given so many historical trends of x. And what about the temporal covariate shift? Before that, we're going to introduce the definition of covariate shift, which is given in the existing work just like this one. It says that given the training and the test data from two distributions like p-train and p-test, which are two joint distributions, 
covert shift is referred to the case that the marginal probability distributions are different and the conditional distributions are the same, i.e., P train and P test are not the same given X, but P Y given X are the same, which is a very standard definition from the community of machine learning. Now we extend the covariate shift assumption to the temporal covariate shift, which means that if we are given a time series dataset D with unlabeled segments, we usually suppose it can be split into K periods or intervals such as D can be composed of D1 to DK, where each DK is a small segment. The temporal coverage shift is referred to the case that all the segments in the same period I follow the same data distribution PDI, while for different time series, time series periods, for example, for different time series periods I and J, PI does not equal to PJ for the marginal distribution, but we often assume the conditional distribution is the same. This is the definition of temporal coverage shift. So, how to solve this TCS problem? Basically, here is a big picture to solve it. Firstly, we need to construct the worst case distribution scenario. For example, the time TCS problem can be constructed in many ways, in many worst case distribution scenarios. How? What, what is the biggest distribution gap between them? We call it the worst case distribution scenario. If we have it, we can then match the big distribution gap between the worst case distributions or the worst case segments, and then we can get a good model. So accordingly, our approach called ADA RNN, where ADA refers to adaptive RNNs, is consists of two modules. The first module is temporal distribution characterization, which means we can characterize the distribution information in the regional time series data. Secondly, we can use temporal distribution matching to build a temporarily invariant model to match the distributions and then finally learn a good model just like this one. We can have the raw training data. We can use temporal distribution characterization to characterize the distribution information to get the worst case distribution scenario of the different segments. After that, we can use some pre-training techniques. After that, we can use the temporal distribution matching scheme to learn our adaptive RN model. Firstly, what about the TDC? The key to TDC is to find the key most dissimilar segments. So, how to define the similarity? We can use different distribution distance D, such as care divergence, and some distribution divergence, such as a maximum mean discrepancy. Another difficult problem here to solve is why we choose the most dissimilar segments we see that diverse distribution information helps good generalization. So if we can have different segments that contain much information, they could be diverse. So we need to get the similar dissimilar segments instead. Our objective can be formulated in this equation. We can see that it's basically some some max operations over some certain conditions. What we do here is to map the raw training data and segment it into several segments and basically we get their index. We see that it's similar to a dynamic programming problem but we solve it using greedy algorithm for efficiency. For example, we can use the raw training data to get 10 segments that 10 segments we believe have the most dissimilar segments that we are ready to solve. Secondly, for the temporal distribution matching, we see that it is a rather plain domain generalization problem with k domains. What is domain generalization? Basically, we have several domains, such as segments in our last problem. We have, for example, we have k segments, so we have k domains. If we want to learn a generalized model from the k domains, it is called domain generalization. We can use this formula to minimize their loss. So what does this formula say? Basically, it consists of two modules. Firstly, we use the loss for prediction. Basically, it's an MSE loss. And then we can use this formula to minimize their 
segmentwise distribution distance. For example, if we use some certain distance d to compute the distance between d i and d j, we can get their distributions gaps. So we can minimize their gaps. This is a rather popular domain generalization problem. But we figured that plain d g ignores the importance of each hidden representation's distribution. So we propose TDM in an RN. Note that the RNN have so many hidden state representations, which are of great importance to our RNN modeling. So we need to learn an adaptive weight matrix for each hidden state. In here, it is a matrix alpha. We call it alpha is an adaptive weight matrix. So we can use it to learn the importance between hidden states HI and HJ. And then we can formulate it as an adaptive weighted version of this formula. So how to learn the weight matrix alpha? A naive way of attention layer will fail since at early stage the hidden state representations learned by theta are less meaningful, which will result in insufficient learning of weights. And secondly, the network can easily get stuck since it is very complex and time consuming. Our solution is a boosting based importance evaluation method. It is based on boosting, but the difficult step is we learn to value its importance in each step if at equation n its distance is greater than the distance from the last step, then we will just increase its value by times g function. Note that the g function here is greater than 1. So we can make sure that alpha will increase in this situation. Otherwise, we will keep it unchanged. Using this very, very simple boosting based importance valuation method, our work can finally learn to evaluate the importance of each state and state. Now it's the full figure of our temporal distribution matching method. We can see that if we are given two segments, di and dj, we can learn to evaluate their importance between each hidden state hi and hj using the boosting based importance evaluation method. We can finally learn the value of alpha and learn to minimize the loss of temporal distribution matching using this formula and then combine this formula with this one to minimize our final model loss to learn a good RN model, which we call adaptive RNN. Now we are coming to experiments. We adopted four experiment datasets. Among them, one is for classification tasks and three are for regression tasks. And here are their statistical information of these datasets. We use some baselines. We use four kinds of baselines. The first baseline is some traditional methods like our RIMA, GRU, and LightGBM, which are all popular methods for time series modeling. Second, it's existing DA or DG methods like MMD or DNN. Note that no methods exist for time series transfer learning, so we simply modify their loss. And the third type is transformer, which is a strong baseline. And the last one is the latest TS methods like FSTNet from SIGIR18 and Stripe from NeurIPS20. And our base network is a two-layer GRU, but note that the GRU is only a impro an improved version of RN. Certainly, our work does not depend on GRU, but on can apply to RN and LSTM2. The results are remarkable. For example, if in this one we can see that the time series classification or IDR achieves the best performance, and in this stock price prediction, we can see that our work on can also achieve the highest IC and ICIR values across all the metrics. Thirdly, we can see that the weather prediction and electric power consumption gives the best performance of our method. We also did some temporal distribution calculation analysis. For example, if we can learn to segment the number, we can see from this figure that if we are given one time series data, we can see that they have multiple segments and for example, for this dingling and dons station, 
The best results are not always the same. That means that different numbers of segments reflect a different distribution information. Secondly, from this figure, we can see that our TDC algorithm gives the best segmentation results, better than random split and reverse. This figure tells that our segmentation gives the largest distance of all the segments, but we have the lowest RMSE values, which means our TDC algorithm remains effective to find the most diverse distributions. And for temporal distribution matching, from this figure, we can see that the learned weights are far more effective and our boosting method achieves the best results. Finally, our TDM is agnostic to different distribution matching distances. For example, in this figure, we can see that if we use cosine distance, adversarial learning, or MMD, or coral, we can achieve remarkably the similar performance, but all better than the existing state view the art method. We add some detailed analysis. For example, we can see that from this figure, our method gives a smaller distance, means we, our method can fully reduce the distribution distance. And for example, in this one, we can see that our method gives the best multi-step prediction results. We also did some analysis for the convergence. We can see that our method can convert within a few iterations. For the training time, we can see that our method will not bring significant computational burden and even more efficient than the state-of-the-art method stripe. We also have some case study. For example, we show that the ground truth and prediction value for MMDRNN, DNRNN, and our ADRNN, we can draw their difference from this figure, we can see that our method gives the lowest errors. One more thing, our method does not limit to RN models, but to transformer models. For example, we can use that structure to apply to transformer to get a model called Eta Transformer, which stands for Adaptive Transformer. It is very simple to add the TDM module to the transformer through the self-attention. We can see that without heavily tuning hyperparameters, our method gives better performance than the vanilla transformer. Research on transformer is left for future work. Now we have our conclusion. We gave the new problem for the first time we discover and formally define the temporal curvature shift problem for time series data. Secondly, we gave a novel method. To solve TCS, we propose either RN to learn temporary invariant model to ensure good generalization performance. Finally, our ADR gives good performance on stock prediction, activity recognition, weather forecasting, and electric power consumption. Thank you for your watching. And here are some useful links for your reference. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.